Hey y'all, so I am out here on the hunt for another cemetery. Um, I don't know, you can see back there behind me. That's like the National Aquarium or something. I don't know, something about water. I can't really read French that well. And then the other side of that is the Cité de l'Architecture. And a really awesome space to take a picture with the Eiffel Tower. And I love the Eiffel Tower. It's like my favorite space to go. Uh, but it's kind of crazy out here. Like it's hard to get to crosswalks and traffic through that. So I've had to take like a really roundabout right route to get here. Right? <laughs> a roundabout route to get here. Um, my GPS has been saying I'm two minutes away for like the past 10 minutes. I don't know what's going on. I feel like I'm walking in circles. But we'll see. Maybe I'll get there in a minute. Maybe not. But uh, let's see what happens. Bye. All right, y'all. I finally made it. I can't tell you the mess I had with GPS. It decided it's not going to work today. But I didn't realize it until like 10 minutes ago. But I've been walking for easily 30 minutes and every time I turned or walked anywhere my GPS was like wrong direction rerouting but it always showed us two minutes away uh, but I could never like get to the place so finally I just turned my GPS off and used the street signs and a map old school navigation look at that for the win and I got here in two minutes from where I was after I finally decided to do that but you can see behind me is the sign for the cemetery, I am here, main gates of the cemetery. This is the Cimetière de Passy, perhaps. <laughs> Let's see, 1820 cemetery. This one closes at 5.30, Monday to Friday, 8 to 5.30. So we're good, I think it's, let me see. Okay, my time won't pop up right now, okay. Well, I think it's like, something it took me like forever to get here I can't tell y'all how much trouble I had first I got I got on the right metro but I took the wrong direction sorry it's windy again every time I go to the cemetery it's windy but um, yeah I got on the metro and took the wrong direction I didn't recognize it until like I don't know eight nine stops down the way and so then I had to like get off and switch and ride like almost 15 stops back because it was like a long way anyway and then the gps foolishness but we made it we have time to spare and uh so we're gonna go okay we're just entering the cemetery this is like a lower level road you can see the raised up part at the front they have a map and they have a section talking again about the vegetation out here just like the last cemetery we went to and Montmartre. So Montmartre? Montparnasse that's where it was. I haven't been to Montmartre yet but that's where I would like to go. And I am working with the camera on my phone again. I don't know what the situation is like with the microphone on my other camera. So until I get that straightened out, I'm just going to use my phone. The, um, the other camera does really good video. It's easier to control and it lasts a bit longer than my phone and it's you know dedicated camera storage versus my phone which I use for a bunch of other stuff so wow look at that that's beautiful So we're just going to do a walk through, just like last time, not looking for anything in particular. See inside. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. The sunlight is hitting it just right. 
I love the use of stained glass in the cemeteries here. It's just really quite beautiful. Looks like those over there are being worked on. Yeah, there's actually somebody in there. They're like wrapped all in white and I see like a casket or something. So we won't bother them while they're working. Although it would be very awesome to see what they do. I think if I seriously study cemeteries, like if that is just the thing that I do, um, I would like to really do some kind of close internship or apprenticeship with somebody who works in a cemetery in another country. I know that might be silly as people are like, well, if you're going to work in America, why don't you want to study in America? And basically, I just want a different perspective. It's not to say I won't study in America. Um, I most likely will. I already have been, and I will continue to do so. But I just want other experiences. It's hard to gather a list of best practices if you don't know what other people's best practices are. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at how that tree has grown up over the cross. That is amazing. You know, I have a thing about trees and cemeteries, as y'all heard from the last video. Um, but this is an interesting way to do it. And it looks like that was purposely made to grow that way. It's been wrapped around the top in like coils um, and purposely wrapped around the base of the cross. As far as I know, trees don't normally grow in circles. <laughs> See, 1885 is dates on these. Oh my, look at that. Let's see if I can get a better view. Short of standing on something. <laughs> got my shadow out there but it's sunny out here so it's gonna have my shadow that is awesome it's like a horse and it's blue 1947 to 2000 it's interesting it's like a little corner thing. You have some privacy. I wonder what this is called. If anybody knows what this is called, let me know in the comments. It's got the kind of a angled corner. And the opposite side here is just open. So you can see. So it's sort of very private, even though it's surrounded by all of these other burial spots. The family could literally come here and sit if this wasn't so overgrown. And they still can. They could like cut it away, I guess, and sit. Alright, let's continue on the path. These are interesting trees. They're like pine needles. 
Almost. They're very hard and prickly. If you can see the kind of mess they make, it's better than big giant leaves though. I prefer that over giant leaves. Alright, let's keep going. I'm not looking for anything in particular. I'm not here to like teach a lesson. We're just exploring. Looking at some differences in Parisian cemeteries and cemeteries back home. We have another very thick wall here. There's traffic on the other side of the wall that seems to be common. And this is a raised up cemetery, so we're actually on like probably the second story of most buildings. <laughs> Look at this. I love his facial expression too. Let's see if I can zoom in. There. Huh. Let's keep looking. I'm just really loving the natural places for putting the plantings. I mean, this is built into this area and it's like, I don't know if you can see from this angle, it's like completely dirt down there, all the way up under that big stone. And then they've added these plastic potters, potted plants in the front. This one, I don't know what's going on over here. This is like a storage space, maybe. Maybe this is where the workers just sort of keep stuff so it's easy access, because this is back in the corner of the cemetery a bit. There are people out here, so I don't want to interrupt or distract whatever they're doing. I'm just going to point the camera off to the side. I could see something like that being an American cemetery and somebody trying to clean it. <laughs> this is an awesome view. Sometimes the cemeteries here don't even look like cemeteries. They look like little villages. My phone is overheating. I've been told that France is in like a little heat wave. It's not super hot to me. There's a nice breeze. Luckily, the wind hasn't interrupted my recording too much just yet. I'm amazed at how many of these are open. Like, I think in America, that's something that wouldn't happen often, right? These things would be closed up. Well, some of them, the doors look broken. But others, not the case. Look at that. Let me back up. My, my, my. That is beautiful. Try to make sure I don't hit anything behind me. And that actually has steps that go down. Curious as to how far down it goes. See, I'm running down there like a push broom. Some beautiful artistic stones out here. You can see my shadow 
Okay, so there are names engraved in the walls with gold leaf, marble floors, and it looks like trying to get a good angle. Okay, I can't see because of this shelf right here when you first walk down. But I think there's like an angel statue down there and actual places to bury people inside of that little marble shelf down there. This is amazing. It would be so cool to have like, you know, a family burial and this was it. I don't know how many generations you could have buried in a place like this. And the whole family could just come, you know, in a special place. That's so neat. Trash cans and water. I mentioned in a previous video how important it is to have water. Cannot say it enough. Cemeteries need water. Wow, what is happening here? Oh my. And they enclosed it in that glass, I guess some kind of plexiglass probably protects it from the elements but I wonder what other issues that causes but that thing is beautiful I suppose at one time it was completely clear I wonder how often they had to replace that I could see the cracking and stuff happening on the glass itself or the plastic whatever that is La Baron Catherine du Florigny. Que la vie était belle lorsque nous étions ensemble. trying to translate that in my brain without looking anything up. My French is, y'all, it's terrible to say. My French is still not good. Uh, I just learned Lorsku the other day. Um, not even in class, just in conversation with somebody. <laughs> I guess it's like, what a life. Uh, she had something like that with you? What a how good life was with you together, or something like that. I don't know. And this is actually a picture of a lady, but it's hard to see head on to see it from the side. Okay, so I'm gonna walk back. I see some things in much need of repair, and they've been marked off by the cemetery staff. So we're gonna take a look at them. Oh, look at that. You can see the Eiffel Tower from here. <laughs> I did walk circles around it trying to find this place when my GPS was not working with me. A lot of the structures out here are just grand on like a whole other level. It's really beautiful. I think people are missing out by not coming to the cemetery. Everyone wants to go to the Père Lachaise Cemetery, which is like the most popular one, I suppose. But some of the smaller ones are just as wonderful. 
Yeah, this thing. I see why they've candy striped it. <laughs> Look at the top of that. I'm sorry, there comes the wind. You can see under the window there. That thing is quite unsafe. So I can zoom out again. There we go. And get a little closer here. Let's see what we see. I apologize if the camera is a bit bouncy. I'm trying to keep it still. I'm trying to learn from mistakes and do better each video. Yeah, the top of this is... I wonder what happened to cause the top to be in such disrepair. You uh, stone masons and cemetery experts out there, let me know. Put it in the comments. Let me know what you think is going on with this. Why is most of the damage up top like that? And you see some here at the base. That's actually where somebody's information is carved. And we see some information, or not information, but some damage there. The door is partially opened. So now, and I apologize, it's so hard to see my screen. I can't even tell what my camera is really focused on right now because the sun is so directly on top of me. pointing at it. I think so. <laughs> Gosh, the sun is directly in my eyes. I have on sunglasses and everything, but it's just so hard to see. There's a Jewish burial back there. One thing my cemetery teacher was pointing out last year when we visited cemeteries was about the diversity of the burials in Parisian cemeteries, like when it comes to religion. Um, what we had happening was, you know, like in America, you have Christian cemeteries, Catholic cemeteries, Jewish cemeteries, like whatever. It sort of seems church-based a lot of times. Well, I guess that's because of a lot, a lot of our cemeteries were connected directly to our churches, but I think the case is the same here. But um, here they don't have like the cemetery sectioned off where like only Jews are buried here, or only black people are buried there, and only Catholics are buried in this area. Like they're sort of intermingled here in Paris. Wow. <laughs> the flowers, the shells, rocks, candles. A tiara, all kinds of little things. I don't even know who's buried here because they've completely covered up the words with all of the love. That's so beautiful. There's even shells like inside of the planters. Look at this tree. What is happening? That tree looks flat. Wait, what? Okay, it's a stone behind it. it. Makes it look like a flat tree. Wow. Oh, that scared me. <laughs> it's a man's bust down there peeking out at me. Hey, dude. <laughs> Somebody's watching me. I always feel like. Let me stop. That's when I try to post this on Facebook. They'll be like, you have copywritten music on your video. <laughs> Yeah, there's the tree. I'm not walking under that because I'm seeing all kinds of bugs flying around. You see at the top, you can get a good picture of that. Right there is a little drainage spout. So when it rains, we got one in the front up here too. So when it rains, the water doesn't collect on the top and 
cause issues with the stone, it just drains out. That tree could use some pruning. <laughs> Well, besides those three people I saw earlier, I have really not seen a whole lot of people here. Look at this. Henry Farman. Died 1958. Precursor at Pioneer. To Lair Premier on Monde. I am the complete official Monde. Kilometre circuit fair. I got a feeling that's somebody who I should look up and find out what all of that means. Okay, it's a fresh rail sort of fenced in plot that I've seen has steps up, but they're fenced in. And then you have the gate, which is partially open, and it looks like three burial places inside. I'm curious if there's any difference, like in the type of decorations we put on our gates versus the kind they use here. I've definitely never seen anything like this. So there could be the little curves and what that is, leaves or something? Kind of like the end of a tail. <laughs> that stereotypical like devil's pitchfork tail kind of thing. I know it's not. That's like what comes to mind when I see it. It's probably like a leaf. <laughs> like a vine kind of leaf. Two of the copper things, the bronze things that came out. I wonder what they were for. Maybe hanging plants? We won't walk around the back there. I'll head towards this one. This looks interesting. What is happening here? I have a big A for Antoine. Looks like there were stickers. Hmm. I'm not going to torture y'all with any more of my French efforts. Although I'm supposed to practice speaking. I really struggle with that a lot. In my class in America, was pretty large and so not everyone could always speak all the time but we all spoke sometime what in the world is that i have found an alien nest <laughs> all right there's a couple of them in this tree yo what are these things tree lovers arborists tell me what those are are they like bug things? If there are, that's scary because there's tons of them. Hopefully they're just like seed pods or something. This one has white stones left on it. Clearly intentional. Get my reflection. 
can't help it. <laughs> Let me actually look inside. A lot of these look like, let's see if I can step out the way a bit. Doesn't really help much. It's great reflective glass. <laughs> a lot of those inside look like, like altars, you know? that symbol means beside the cross anybody who knows drop it in the comments let me know as I try to learn we learn together okay I said I don't want to walk under that tree so we're gonna go around I'm gonna cut this video soon because we're almost at 30 minutes now I'll start recording another Brown, that's cool. Enjoying this shade for a minute because it is hot. It's weird because in Virginia it's you know humid and so I feel always hotter than it is and I always feel like wet and stuffy and sweaty and just like I'm breathing water. <laughs> but here I don't notice that it's hot because it's dry. It's really dry. I haven't noticed much humidity at all. In fact, my mouth and my nose are like always dry. So I walk through the trees. Is this different? Reminds me of something Egyptian. It's cool. 1970s. Here's that same cross again. I'm thinking they must be Catholic. Something Catholic. Let's see some damage to these headstones. I don't know what these are called. Headstones? Tablets? I forget my, uh, my vocabulary and everything is disappearing as I learn French. At first, my French was mingled with Chinese as I filled in, like my brain automatically filled in words I didn't know in French with Chinese words that just immediately come to mind. Um, but now I'm starting to forget the Chinese. That's beautiful right there. And, uh, Unfortunately, the Chinese is not being replaced with French. <laughs> so throughout the day, I try to think of things in both Chinese and French because I have studied Chinese for over 13 years. I do not want to lose all of that effort. And I will not be taking it in school next year because my course load doesn't allow for it. That is beautiful. Look at that book. It's not a real book, it's carved. I wonder what that stone is up there. I don't want to go up there and like be invasive. Later, if I think about it, I might, um, what's the word, translate some of these things. From my own knowledge, but also some of you might be interested to know what these things say. What do the French put on their burials? I wish when I was in China, I had been um, interested in cemeteries because I would have loved, <laughs> well now, the current me, 
would love to visit cemeteries in China um, if they have any. I know a lot of times people cremate now because of space. Look at that. Is that Greek? Somebody tell me what that is. I'm not quite sure. point out the ground here is like weird as we have like these dirt paths some with like these designs in them and then others that were paths that clearly <laughs> like got destroyed um, I'm tripping and stumbling all over the place um, hopefully the camera's not jumping too much when I walk or when I missed up but that is See, look at that, forgetting words. Um, it reminds me of, reminiscent, there we go, it is reminiscent of some of the overgrown cemeteries that I am used to being in, where if there were walkways, they're like covered up or destroyed. Oh, beautiful colors, like sort of pink color with the black. Wow, we have a lot of biological growth happening here. I mean, that doesn't have to be cleaned off. I probably would clean it off, but it doesn't have to be cleaned off. That, I don't know what material that is, but it is broken. It's very thick. fenced in one. We had that same sort of flame motif happening here. Uh, I'm get my bag through here. All these bugs. The bugs like these trees. I guess because it's shade. Look, maybe somebody was a skydiver. All the dates. Let's see. It goes back to 18... 67 is like the earliest birth. I mean, what's the birth, not the death? 1896. Let's see. Yeah, let's say 1896 is the earliest. Eight people. This one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people. See, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Maximizing the space. Let's see, it was like 1828, might be. Uh, yeah, this is deceased. Okay, so 1828 might be the oldest one on here. And you can notice on the stone, I mean, this is kind of cool. You can see like the older ones at the top that were carved earliest are sort of worn away, difficult to read. Even the stone itself is very weathered and it's got stuff growing on it and things. And as you get down towards the newer carvings, the actual texture of the stone changes. It's smoother, it's lighter, probably because they did something to it before they uh, carved those things in there. And these are like, um, they have that black lettering. So it definitely stands out compared to the top ones, which looks like they might have had black lettering at one time. They still might if that was cleaned. When it gives you an idea of like the aging over time, like what happens to the lettering of the stone over time. You can go from super clear to even though the lettering is not blacked in, like it's still easy to read, although there's a broken off part. And then it gets harder and harder to read as you go up, but still legible. And actually the lip on this stone, like that edge that goes around it, protects the letters from like the erosion that would happen with water runoff and stuff like that. 
I mean, it's still going to happen. It's still going to have that, but that does provide protection unless something just sort of hits it head on. This is one where they planted a tree right inside. Two trees, actually. I wonder why one is growing so much more than the other. There's bugs all around these trees. Maybe it's the smell of the trees. Since they have that sort of pine sap smell. I hear you, bird. Alright, I'm going to go up to the shade here. And then we'll stop this video. I'm going to get something to drink. And then we'll start our next round of recording. Okay, so, um, like I said, we're just going to talk for a minute while my phone cools off. If you read my blog post from last week, you'll know that when there's a tree canopy, as the one behind me, it can be up to 45 degrees cooler than areas that are in direct sunlight. So, hopefully my phone will cool off pretty quickly. I mean, it already feels cooler and actually feels like it's a breeze right here, like refrigerating, refrigeration kind of breezes, you know? Like if you had your head in the freezer, which I used to do as a kid when it was hot in the summer. Um, so yeah, it's talking about cultures and how they impact, not just culture, but also religious beliefs and how they impact um, our burial practices. Uh, not just like how our cemeteries look and like the designs and things we choose to put on our headstones and stuff, but also uh, like the, hold on a minute here, there we go, like the, the stones that we choose, you know, marble or granite or, I don't know, slate or whatever the case may be, the colors we choose to put on them. Um, you know, I just showed you back there the one with all the little colored rocks on them. Um, I know in American culture, they had like the, oh, what was it, RVA rocks, where people around Richmond would go out and they would like color these stones and just leave them lay, laying around in like public parks and stuff. And if you find one, you post it to the Facebook page and you take it and leave another. Or you can like leave that for someone else to find when they're out. And they just sort of give nice messages to people, brighten people's days. Um, I know when I would walk with my kids in the parks, like even as older teens, they enjoyed finding those rocks when we were like out and walking around. And just to, like give y'all something else to look at besides me, kind of doing a rotation thing. Um, but I also think about like the shapes we choose. Uh, how are those influenced by our culture? Not just like the crosses, but domes and obelisks and triangles and circles and like those basic shapes. You know, why are our tablets rectangular? <laughs> is it just because our bodies are laid flat in the ground? Or is there some other reason for that? Is it just because that's easiest to lay out a cemetery with like those kind of rectangular burials or you know think of the one we just looked at over here that was sort of spiral down into the ground um, you had an awful lot of burials in a very small space actually about the size of some of these little rectangular ones um, and I'll guarantee they had twice as many spaces for burial over here as you have in the rectangular ones so you know, I just, I think about all these things sometimes when I walk through cemeteries. Um, are, is there a better way to do things than like what we're doing now? Is there, you know, a reason we stick to tradition? Or should we start changing some of our traditions? And like, maybe we need to think about where those traditions come from. And, you know, are they outdated? Maybe there was a reason we needed to do things a certain way 100 years ago, 200 years ago, even 50 years ago. But with changing technologies, um, advancements in our understanding of science and 
sort of how things work. Um, you know, maybe there's there's room for improvement. There's room for alternatives. Um, and I don't mean extreme alternatives like shooting your remains into space or, <laughs> you know, sending your ashes down to be come one with a burial reef or something. Like, maybe there are easier alternatives than what we are choosing um, currently with our cemeteries. All right, so I can tell my phone has cooled off. I have cooled off. And I'm seeing some pretty awesome structures over here. That's why I sort of keep looking off to the side because it's cool stuff. There's a lady coming up behind me, so I'm going to keep my voice down a little bit. But uh, I'm going to flip my camera back around and we'll keep on exploring. Bye. Okay. We are here in the same area where we were just talking. You see some of the cool stuff. I'm loving the coloration happening here. That's so cool. I know a lot of people won't like that stuff. They'll think it's an eyesore. They'll think it needs to be cleaned, like it's damaging or whatever. But I think it's beautiful, like the natural patina that happens on some of these metals. Uh-oh. There's a hole breach. So this guy probably needs some repair pretty soon. I wonder if there's metal inside of that, I can't tell. There was like a rebar or something. And I'm noticing they have like these numbers in the backs of not just the mausoleum things, but like the headstones. Um, I don't know what that means. Seeing it quite a bit. Fairly consistent. Oh, somebody drove their car up in here. drying me out so hit that like and subscribe because I am risking dehydration to shoot these videos for you <laughs> oh look this will look familiar to those of you who saw my previous video look at that loving and supporting nature it's always good Turn a little bit slower so I don't give y'all whiplash. Look at that. That looks like a little house. Almost looks like a chimney on top, but that's a cross. <laughs> These are quite beautiful to see. There are people around me now, so I'm going to be keeping my voice down as we continue to look. Interesting for you, France. What does that mean? Oh, looks like they maybe served in the military, perhaps died in the military. 260th Regiment, the Artillery, the Campaign, Aviator, Alaska uh, Drill 279. sad. Think about people who died during wartime. Gosh, I'm seeing a lot of damage on some of these ones back here. Noticing a very similar style though. It's easier to see like this. They're all about the same height. Except that guy on the end is kind of messing it up with his window. Um, very, very similar styles happening. Look very much like houses. 
damage to the window screen thing. Just make sure it doesn't fall and hurt us. Remains in here. I also see pictures of people, flowers, and then there's names on the side. These names are the same as the ones that are in there. So I'm looking through. Looks like they have room for more. sort of gothic looking things we have this guy <laughs> or this lady that's a woman another airplane person stewardess maybe that is a weird looking plane does it actually have a beak on it that's weird hmm. chevalier du Légion d'honneur I hope my cemetery teacher at UMW doesn't hear my really bad French. And she actually is French and speaks French, so she'll laugh at me, I know. <laughs> Maybe I should tell her to watch so she can just have a good laugh. Who doesn't like a good laugh? Okay, there's a symbol. I remember the first time we saw that, we were like, that kind of looks like a money symbol. <laughs> But I believe that's some kind of Catholic type symbol. Look at this building. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Wow. Look at the spires up on top. It was like a mini church. <laughs> that is so cool. Wow. And the stone, you can't, you probably can't see it on camera, but the stone actually sparkles. Let's see if I zoom in. Can't really see it. Yeah, the stone has sparkles in it, and as the sunlight is hitting it, it's just like glittery, sparkly. We have birdie staring at us. Little gothic <laughs> uh, gargoyle things, but they're like dogs. And there's your little water drain coming out of the bottom of that dog. <laughs> it's a funny placement, huh? I think somebody did that on purpose, a little humor. I mean, I guess if you're not looking for it, it doesn't really stand out that much, but it really does. I'm seeing a larger drain pipe right there coming up the very top. They've got some roof work happening. It's like a tin roof up there. So I think they've done some stuff to that. Maybe they had a lot of water damage. It's amazing to me see how this guy is sort of like free flying I guess I don't know the correct terminology it's amazing that he has not fallen off and there's one on each side and they are staying put that is awesome Let's see the stained glass inside These things are just glorious. For me, there is nothing like the art that you see at a cemetery. I mean, the sculptors and carvers of these artistic creations are just brilliant, brilliant people, brilliant minds, um, so clever, sometimes humorous, um, which is funny, haha, <laughs> funny, when you consider this stuff's going in the cemetery. Sometimes it's tongue-in-cheek stuff that people don't even pick up on.
him. All oh, those medals carved onto his bust. Clearly a decorated man. Looks like he might have been in the Navy or worked in a boat of some kind. Cousins and friends of Watson's neighbors and friends. Oh. Oof. That would have been a bad fall, y'all. Let me show you what I just tripped over. Let me back up. Oh. Look at that. Get down on this level so you can see. <laughs> yeah. I just grabbed my foot. So, I have to be more careful looking through the lens of the camera instead of at the actual ground around me, trying to make sure I'm keeping the camera straight and stuff like that. Oh my goodness. What? Look at that. That is so awesome. Look at the colors caused from the sunlight coming through. Oh, wow. You cannot tell me that is not gorgeous. See, that's what I'm talking about. That is art. And we haven't even seen the whole thing. We're just looking at the back of it. The side. Oh my. I would love to see the colors of those flowers come out. That is so beautiful. I'm going to turn around behind me real quick. Slow. <laughs> this. Is, oh, it's hard to see because we're in the shade. It's beautiful tile work. You can see it here. Maybe it's on this side. Uh, it is, but it's covered up with biological growth, so you can't really see it. You can get up close. But you can see it's dirty. It needs to be cleaned in order to see the true beauty of it, but, um, you know, it's still there. Somebody will see it one day. It's going to try and get a better angle for the camera. I like to see the colors. Let me see. I might unplug here. I have my phone charging, which is probably helping to make it hotter. Let's see. I left this up that. Oh, hard to keep my hand still. And I'm a short lady. <laughs> that is so cool. I didn't even notice like the gold leaf in this one. Amazing what you see when you look up. Alright, let me see if I can come around the front of this building. Oh, did I go tripping again? <laughs> see, we're back on these cobblestone things. I don't know where those people went that were here. I think they have moseyed on somewhere else. All right, this is the front of that building, the cool window. Sight. That is something else. Oh man, it's so big I can't even get it all in one frame. All right, let's continue on. Let's see what the windows on this side look like. This is where the sunlight is actually streaming through. Oh, sun in my face. Oh, look, we can see the colors better. There you go. So that's why that side had that blue kind of coming through on it because these are actually supposed to be blue. And I guess the sunlight is just so bright and it comes across as yellow. Oh, look over here. We have like, what kind of design is that S? And like the uh, let me go on this side because the grass is in the way. Like that, it's like Celtic crosses or something else. Somebody let me know. 
Let me know in the comments what kind of artist, artistry we're looking at. I mean, I'm looking at it, I'm thinking shamrock, I'm thinking Celtic crosses, Scottish, uh, the way the lettering is. I don't know, I could be way off. But I see like the crests kind of shape up there. I don't know. Somebody let me know. Oh, it's a very narrow alleyway. We're not gonna go down there. Those are the trees that creep me out back here. Sorry, I turned the camera kind of quick. I gotta remember to go slower so I don't hurt y'all's necks. <laughs> I'm actually worried about giving you motion sickness, honestly. It can happen. Okay, I'm on the back of the cemetery now. sound I'm just thinking <laughs> sometimes I don't have anything to say I'm just looking just like y'all are probably looking just curious you know noticing our ground is constantly changing as I walk for the glare in the camera. That sun is in full effect right now. I was noticing that here, the temperature does not reach its highest heat until around 6 o'clock or 6.30, somewhere around there. So, yeah, we are not even close to how hot it's going to be today. Let me check the time too because I don't want to get trapped in here. It's 5 o'clock. Okay. So I need to start making my way back up to the front. That's serious damage. I don't know what happened there. And I'm going to walk a little bit faster. Hopefully the camera doesn't bounce around too much. Oh, that's one of those cool columns. It's supposed to symbolize like a life cut off too soon or something like that. Got some Egyptian obelisk stuff happening up here. I'm at a weird angle so you can't really see it. Sorry. Doing the best I can. Oh look. Those look like fridge magnets. <laughs> And see, this is the kind of stuff that you will see a lot of times in minority cemeteries where people kind of leave these memorial things out. <laughs> Her name is Barbie. I just want to show y'all this. I saw it from a distance. <laughs> Look at that. There's one on each side. Is that not like weird and creepy? I don't even actually know how to get out of here. I'm not sure where I am. I was not following the map when I was walking. So I'm just out here. Oh, wow. All of the names. Sorry, as we walk into direct sunlight, let me stand in the shade. Oh, look at all the names, y'all. Twenty-three names. Twenty-three. Wow. Going back to 1844? No. 1898. Yeah, it's like 
Look how close the houses are. You see the houses in the background. You know, a lot of times I mention on here about, you know, things I would or would not clean off of a headstone. And I do want to preface that by saying, uh-oh, that needs to be fixed. I know a guy who could fix that. Shout out to Howard Wellman at Wellman Conservation and uh, the stonemason that he works with, Dublin. They do amazing work. I know they could fix that. Come on out to France, y'all. <laughs> But, um, yeah, a lot of times, whether or not something is clean is solely dependent on the rules of the cemetery. A lot of cemeteries don't allow cleaning. Some of them do dog on power washing, which is really harmful to, oh, wow. Power washing is really harmful to... Uh, historic monuments. I'm going to come back to this topic in a minute, but I'm seeing amazing stuff that I want to document right now uh, before I run out of time. Look at that. Completely glassed in. Giant tile work. Mosaic kind of thing happening inside. Wow. That is beautiful. I bet when the sunlight hits that, it's like so shiny and bright. Cause that's all gold in there mostly. And then I was looking at this. Oh, poor lady, she looks so sad. Again, a tribute to these, ah, cobweb. <laughs> to these uh, wonderful artists to carve these kind of things. Oh, what? So we've got the morning lady. How can I get a decent picture of this thing? The more I go, the more amazing stuff I see. I just can't right now. <laughs> Look at this. It's actual giant gemstones inside that thing. Oh my goodness, that is epic, <laughs> epic, wow, I don't even know how you find out who is buried there, because I don't see any names or anything, but that, oh, gosh, so glorious, I'm just blown away by the cemetery, I have to say. I'm going to have to convince my teacher to take future students to this place in addition to Père Lachaise and the other cemeteries they go to. How to get back to the entrance. They're going to come hunting for me soon. <laughs> Let's see. I'm not even on like a main road. I'm out here uh, in between headstones and behind headstones. Oh my goodness, look. It's like a little house. Oh, the lights are on. That is like so cool. It's like something out of a fairy tale book. I get that it's death, but this kind of stuff excites me. Like it's so beautiful. It really is. And to think of the love and honor that people put into the decisions they make for their family members. Like, it is just oh, quite amazing. How do I get out of here? <laughs> it's amazing, but I gotta go. I'm seeing the 
wall. And now there's two ways out. Oh, check that out. Okay, and this is the day that y'all probably see me get locked into a cemetery because <laughs> it's so cool. I don't want to leave. Oh, gosh. I see a person. Okay, she's going to tell me to go in a minute. Sitting the people. I just want to say that that cemetery guard was smoking in the cemetery. And when she finished, she dropped it on the ground. <laughs> Slowly making it back up to the front. Sorry for my shaky filming. I was trying to rush. No, oh, I should have just followed the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, that's how I got in here. Get outside, we will stop and talk. I don't want to do it in here. I got locked out. <laughs> the wind has stopped for now, but it's going to be hotter on the streets. So I'll keep my talk brief. Okay. I did not come in this way, but it'll work for going out. railing as I go. Step, 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 step. Bounce, 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 sweep me, bounce, sweep me. Okay. Ow, there's something in my shoe. Ow. <laughs> Where is it? Okay, I am like irritated. I just realized that I wasn't recording. Yo. I don't know when it stopped recording. I just caught some pretty awesome stuff too. I might actually have to come back if those um, videos didn't come out because the stuff I saw right at the end was amazing and you deserve to see that. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, so I was mentioning about um, the care of things in the cemetery and excuse me if I'm looking all over the place. The camera is actually like down here, <laughs> but I'm used to looking like up here somewhere with the camera. Um, so I have to keep reminding myself, like, you're not looking at the camera. You're looking, like, cross-eyed or something. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I had mentioned before about things I would and would not clean at the cemetery. And a lot of times it's things people wouldn't agree with. Like, I would actually prefer to keep a lot of things um, dirty, just as they are. And that's mainly because cleaning does damage. It does damage the stone. It doesn't matter what you use. If you are wiping the stone, if you are touching the stone, you are damaging the stone. And no, it's not immediate. It's not like, oh, I wiped the stone and now, you know, it's damaged forever. These are small damages that happen over time. And so every time you clean it, you're kind of stripping off a layer of stone. Shoot, I wanted to sit in the shade, but I don't want people like being annoyed by me talking to them. <laughs> um, so when you're cleaning it, you're stripping off a layer of stone, and we don't want to do that. Um, it's not a big, a, a big deal if the stone is being like monitored. If someone's checking it and keeping track of when it's being cleaned and that kind of thing, you know. Uh, just the arbitrary number, you know. I wouldn't clean a headstone more than once every 10 to 20 years. Um, 
of course that depends on what you see and what is happening around the headstone and why it might be getting dirty and maybe things you could do around it to stop it from getting the buildup of dirt or biological growth or whatever might be happening to it. Um, but as long as the stone is readable, like there's letters there, there's words, you can make them out, you don't need to clean it. Um, you know, dirt is not really going to damage the stone. A lot of times it actually protects it from a lot of the elements. Um, that's one interesting thing. You know, we used to, um, not just me, but a lot of people at these abandoned cemeteries, they search for headstones that are like sunken below the level of the ground. So they're partially buried, you can't see them. Or sometimes they're, you know, three to four inches underground. Um, and they'll find these headstones, unbury them, and bring them up to the surface, which is great because, you know, there may be information there that wasn't recorded, or maybe it's a family member who's looking for that burial location, and they couldn't find it, and now they can. Um, but it's also terrible <laughs> because now you're exposing that stone to the elements, to erosion, and all the things that come with, you know, our, our climate that we live in. And so... I was, I was just, you know, kind of pointing out that a lot of times the stones that pull up, um, they're in better shape than the stones that have been exposed over the years. You know, if the stone was buried for 10 or 20 years, a lot of times it comes out in pristine condition, so long as you don't do any damage to it when you're pulling it up. Uh, so there's something to consider. Um, another thing... If the cemetery has been recorded, like all the burials have already been recorded, um, there's a record of it like at the Department of Historic Resources or at like a heritage library or um, a cultural museum, an ancestry museum or a cemetery database, a genealogy database, somewhere like that, like if the information is available publicly online. And, you know, that headstone has been recorded. People took pictures of it. Um, maybe there's paperwork from assessments that were done to it. If that work has been done, then we don't need to clean the headstone. We really don't. You know, anyone who wants to know where their loved one is buried can search online or go to, you know, the museum or the library or wherever that information is housed, and they can figure out like where their loved one is. They could probably get a map of the cemetery. Um, they could probably, um, you know, get a picture of the headstone online. And if they want to visit, then the resources are there that direct them to where the burial might be. So there's that. Um, I'm just trying to think what else. I don't know. But my point is that we have to think about what we're really doing here. Um, for preservation, it's like we want to preserve, right? Um, one way you preserve is recognizing the little things you do that cause damage over time, like the cleanings, um, like spraying a doggone headstone down with like a power washer or people who use bleach, which is a huge no-no. Um, you know, and even these new, um, new cleaners and sprays and things that come out on the market, people are like, don't damage headstones and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, how can you know? How can you know if it damages a headstone? A lot of times the damage doesn't show up for 50 to 100 years. So have you done your research? Like... Did, did you have a stone sitting in a garage somewhere for a hundred years that you sprayed with this cleaner? I know it sounds ridiculous, right? But this is what happens. That's the same process we have with like medications, right? They go through like all these trials and tests with like a, a small sample of the population. They do it for like X number of years and they say, oh, it's safe, it's safe. And then 50 years later, people have cancer from powder, from you know, whatever, they have kidney and liver failure from, you know, pain medicine um, because the tests weren't run long enough. 
and we could not predict what would happen, you can't predict what would happen, you have to do the test. Um, and unfortunately, in these cases, by the time you figure out, it's too late. You cannot reverse the damage. The same is true with headstocks. And you can't get a class action suit together to like sue a company who created a spray 50 years ago that was supposed to clean your headstock. Um, so we really have to be mindful of these kind of things. For family members, um, you know, descendant family members, uh, which includes like the whole world, myself included, like if you've ever lost someone, um, you still have to consider like what is your ultimate goal in cleaning it. Um, if you know what the headstone looks like, why do you need to clean it every year? Like, instead of coming through with cleaner and wiping the headstone down, why don't you just consider maintaining the plot? Which is something historically that um, a lot of people in the black community used to do because black cemeteries weren't funded. They didn't receive federal funds for their cemeteries. Um, so a lot of times they had to go through and clean like the plots and things themselves. And so that meant that they were cutting away brush, cleaning up trash, uh, raking out plots, you know, these kind of things. Doesn't necessarily mean they were scrubbing down headstones. Uh, there are other ways to clean and other ways to preserve the, the memory of your ancestor. Um, and again, the headstone just doesn't need to be cleaned that often. It's just something to consider, because if you want these things to last longer, then you clean less. That's, that's pretty much my methodology, I suppose, <laughs> or my philosophy, right? Um, and again, if the information is safe somewhere, you've got pictures of the headstone in a good condition, you don't really need to continue to clean it. It's something that you can wait on until it's desperately needed, you know? Um, or unless there's something that happened to it that actually puts the stone itself in danger um, or causes the stone to be a danger to someone else, in which case you don't need cleaning, you need like conservation, which is a whole nother thing. And it's something that I don't recommend for volunteers, untrained volunteers to do. Um, so there's that. But there's outside of the, I got way off topic, I'm not, it's like parallel topic I guess but what I'm actually speaking to is like you know when I clean and why I clean and that kind of thing so I have my own personal like reasons for doing stuff my own personal thoughts and ideas about it but those are kind of superseded by the expectations of the cemetery owners for one um, because they are the ones who put the bill for that space. You know, it's their responsibility. Like if something goes wrong with that headstone, with that plot, with someone working in that plot, that's on them. They have to pay, you know, <laughs> they, they have to pay unless somebody signs some documents or some waivers, um, they have to pay. And a lot of places don't want to do that. And the other thing is um, the descendants. What the descendants want matters as well. Um, a lot of times descendant wants and cemetery wants do not align as I have seen in my past work. And unfortunately, it's just the way it is. There's nothing uh, to be done for it. You know, there's a lot of mediation that can happen. Um, but a lot of times people are firm in their stances and refuse to compromise, refuse to give. Um, and so that can cause a big problem. <laughs> Um, and so people have to be aligned in their, their purpose for the cemetery, how the information is preserved, when cleaning is done, and why cleaning is done, and what processes are used to clean. Because um, all stones are not one size fits all, you cannot clean them all the same way. Um, and even if they're the same material, like if they're all granite stones, you still cannot clean them all the same way. It really depends on a lot of factors, like maybe the condition of the stone. Um, so yeah, it's just some things to think about, you know. As a preservationist myself, um, I often have to weigh like my personal beliefs, um, 
my desire for preserving information for like prosperity <laughs> um, but then I have to sort of mm, sometimes push that to the side for what the cemetery owners might want or what the descendants might want um, all I can do is suggest what's best um, if people don't want what's best they want something else then I try to give them what they want while still offering options for what's best. <laughs> um, because maybe you do want to clean a stone every year or every five years or whatever. And if that's the case, then I just want to make sure that that stone has been fully documented in its pristine condition before any cleaning happens, you know. Um, so that we have that information somewhere so that in 50 years or 100 years, when that stone is unreadable um, or damaged in some other way, we will have documentation of how it used to look. And if, you know, the cemetery owners or descendants or whoever later down the line wants to make a change and fix that stone or update that stone or whatever, they know how it used to look and they can sort of repair in kind. They don't know what materials was used or what measurements the stone had and um, the colors and the iconography and everything you know um, and so that's really important documentation 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 in fact don't clean document that's what I want to say <laughs> document 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 um, you can never have too much documentation <laughs> so yeah that's that um, I'm gonna end this video because I'm literally standing on like a street corner <laughs> that's why you hear all the traffic there's people walking all around people giving me weird looks I am talking loud because I'm like outside um, there's like a good six to ten feet between me and anybody else um, so if it's bothering them oh well but that is it thank you for walking with me through cemetery uh, pass I suppose I'm not sure how you say it I'll have to look that up as I continue to work on my French pronunciation and uh, that's it. I hopefully will get this video out to you soon and I will see you on our next journey. <laughs>